Hi everybody and thank you for joining me in this new short video presentation regarding catheter ablation in a man with frequent PVCs from outflow tract. I hope you will enjoy it and join me in my future video presentations. Our patient is a 63 year old man with frequent rapid refractory monomorphic PVCs from outflow tract with a PVC burden around 21,000 per day who was referred to our center for catheter ablation. The ECG shows frequent monomorphic PVC with left bundle branch block pattern and a RS transition around V3, V4 which is also later than sinus rhythm. As you can see here, this morphology is compatible with the septal region of the right ventricular outflow tract with a transition around V3, V4. This figure and the previous one are from an interesting review article which summarizes very good the application of ECG for localization of outflow tract. So in summary, we have a positive lead one in this ECG which shows a right ward from midline structure as the origin of the PVC. The AVL is negative and based on the transition zone, the PVC could be either in right coronary cusp if the transition is at or earlier than V2, posterior RVOT or right coronary cusp if the transition is at V3 and as in our patient, the transition V3, V4 or at V4 or later than V4, therefore the, the PVC should be in the posterior RVOT. So at the beginning of the procedure, we started mapping the RVOT without mapping the pulmonary artery. The earliest point was around minus 20 milliseconds and the pace map was just 94 or 95% and the ablation was without effect and unsuccessful. Therefore, we started to mapping the right coronary cusp. In right coronary cusp, we had an activation around minus 30 milliseconds and as you can see here, a perfect pace map with a PASO score of 97.4%. At this location, the ablation was successful, but we had recurrence after one to one or two minutes after ablation. Therefore, we went back to the right outflow tract, and at this time, we started mapping the pulmonary artery. And finally, we find the earliest point in the pulmonary artery with a pace map of 97.6% and an activation around minus 40 milliseconds and ablation at this location was successful. It is very interesting in this case to see that we have two pace maps around 97-98%, one in the right coronary cusp and the other one in the pulmonary artery and the distance between these two points were 17.5 millimeter and it shows the limitations of the pace map in exact localization of PVCs from outflow tract. In this slide, we see the best signal in the right coronary cusp with transient successful ablation. And here we see the successful ablation site. During sinus rhythm, the local potential is late. And during the PVC, this local potential is almost minus 40 millisecond earlier than beginning of the QRS. This is an interesting example of PA potential, which corresponds to cost potential in patients with LVOT PVC. I hope you enjoyed this short presentation and I would like to invite you joining me here in my future short video presentations. Thank you for your attention.